from above. We're so happy to be here today, and we have a very exciting show for you. Uh, we are working on our series, Dreams That Changed the World. This has been a really exciting series so far, hasn't it? And I really love when, when Ted prepares for the message for you guys. I love the research that he does, all the facts that he's sharing with me. I've been excited like for this last three weeks because so many beautiful things have happened through dreams. Oh, yeah. Incredible powerful, inventions, powerful, powerful revelations. Things that change the world, things that we perceive the world in the way it is today, change through the dreams. The people who are actually believers in dreams and were open enough to listen and receive. And we've, I mean, we've talked about scientists and we've talked about musicians and writers, and all of them had reached, you know, very high levels, and it all was inspired and started through a dream they had at night while they were sleeping. And that's what we're here to talk to you about, is we want to get you excited about it and realize that you can have the dreams that you have at night are bringing information that can totally change things. Today is part three, and it's called True, true Genius. Where's that true genius coming from? Is it about our IQ? Is it about what we have learned and read about? Or is there something else happening that's really what's creating true genius where you're able to kind of go beyond what other people are already talking about and know, and you're able to step into a, a space or an area that's a totally new way of thinking, that you're able to work on something completely different. Well, for me, I believe that that is a genius. Oh, I know that. Well, I just love the guy. But you guys know <laughs> that there are a lot of wonderful people who could be the genius in their own right. They only need to tap into their potential, into their gifts. All of us are geniuses in our own right. But some people are extraordinary. And these are the people that we will be talking about today. Well, yeah. I mean, when you think of the word genius, does, is there someone that comes to mind? I mean, besides me. Uh, is there someone, Nobody else. <laughs> is there someone that comes to mind that you think of when you think of, you know, a genius? Well, to me, Einstein. Einstein. I, that, me too. I think that's one right? that, the minute because we Because start... he was a true genius. His character was weird. He was a strange looking guy. Even today when we see his picture with his hair, you know, and his facial expression, you know, genius. And what did he do? He changed the way we perceive he, he really the world. Did. But that's who I think of when I think of a genius. I'm like, wow, you know, it's got to be first one that comes to mind usually is Einstein and that's the first person I want to talk about I have a few people will talk about how they they did something really incredible and uh, so Einstein you know he developed the theory of relativity and and he credited the start of that idea to a dream that he had at night a nighttime dream and in that dream he talked about how he was hurtling down the side of a mountain and looking up at the stars and as he approached the speed of light he noticed how the stars changed in appearance. Mm -hmm. He woke up from this dream. And this thought started to stick with him. Now, it's interesting because I, I did a little bit of homework on this. And I found um, what it was like. There's a kind of an account from his wife. What it was like the next morning. So he's woken up from this dream now. And he's sitting at breakfast. And it says, she says, during breakfast one morning, he seemed lost in thought and ignored his food. Uh, she, she asked him if something was bothering him. He sat down at his piano and started playing. Mm. He continued playing and writing notes for about a half an hour. And then he went upstairs to his study where he remained for two weeks. And, uh, and she was bringing him food at that point uh, up to his room. And at the end of two weeks, he came downstairs and he had two sheets of paper bearing his theory. Wow. So... The the idea didn't was, take him long, only two weeks. Right, but the, only two weeks to change the world. The Amazing. idea had already started in this dream. This is what unlocked it, made him start thinking about something new. He can't eat in the morning. It, he's he's already meditating on this, and that was another thing I read about. Is he he talked about how he just started to meditate on this idea of how mm -hmm. the stars changed the way they appeared mm -hmm. as he was approaching the speed of light and he kept he kept thinking and thinking about that and and out of that of course came the theory of relativity i mean it's it's quite a you know it's quite a, a very interesting way that it happened isn't it absolutely well his wife was a lucky one as well she was also married to a genius right yeah just as <laughs> lucky as you <laughs> 
Uh, but I mean, the, the point is, what we're make, saying here is that you too can do this. It's not just, yes, Einstein, yes, we, we look at him and we say, wow, he's a genius. But all of you are dreaming. Everybody dreams, right, Liza? Everybody dreams. Everybody dreams. And you know that there are dreams that you're having where you are are gaining thoughts and ideas mm -hmm. that are different than the norm. Now, Einstein took and he went into his room for two weeks and he meditated on this and he focused on this and he really, he started to flesh out what is there. He could tell there's, there's some sort of truth there that he didn't understand, but he knew, he recognized it and he started to kind of pull it out of there. And so for two weeks, he's pulling this truth out and fleshing it out until it, you know, he comes down the stairs and he's got these two papers that now contain his theory. Incredible. I wish I was there. Yeah, it sounds pretty exciting. Yes. But the point is, you guys can do that too. That's what we've been talking about this series, Dreams That Change the World. Not because we're just highlighting these people, mm -hmm. but because we know that's what your potential is too. The dreams are that powerful. In fact, I remember um, many years back, it was probably also in the 90s or the beginning of 2000, something like that, I was having dreams. And I remember that I was, I would wake up in the morning and I was starting to think, and I was thinking about Einstein's theory of relativity. And I was pondering it and I was, you know, thinking about all these different ideas and I had all these questions and I had kind of received answers for them in my dreams. And then I realized after doing this for several days, maybe even a, a week or so, I realized, wait a minute, I, I don't think I'd actually ever sat down and read Einstein's theory of relativity. So does that mean that you tapped into the same source of information and it was just downloaded into you without yeah. you even opening the book and learning? That's right. That's right. And that's what I, I went to the bookstore to find out because I, I suddenly thought, wait a minute, I, I, didn't, I don't remember reading that. And so I thought, well, maybe it's not Einstein's theory of relativity. Maybe I'm thinking about something else. Maybe I've created my own theory. Mm -hmm. But I went to the bookstore, I found it, I read it, and I was like, you know, back in those days they had bookstores, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, and um, and what, what I found was, yes, it was it, but see, you're right. Now, why don't you talk a little bit about how, where is this that I tapped into? Because obviously he tapped into something, the information, and here I was able to tap into the same place. So what is that place if everybody can be tapping into that same information? See, you guys, what I believe is that there are no mysteries at all. It's just us who need to learn how to tap into all the knowledge that there is. See, we were created from somewhere, from some place, and everything that we will ever think or discover was already created as well. And if you think about this place as storage of all the knowing information that we were to discover. It's the storage that is already there existing in the spiritual realm. You just need to attune yourself to it. How do you do it? If you think about um, the radio waves, right? Mm -hmm. To find the station that you want, you need to adjust, right? Your, your radio waves and, and uh, be on the same length as the radio station that you want to receive so that's the same thing you just train yourself to attune to this special wave and whatever subject you're interested in and you will be kind of gaining access to the information that you're looking for you can't do it with your mind because the information is not coming from here it's not coming from what you already know Einstein could not create the theory of relativity because nobody knew about it. He never read about it. He never learned anything about it, right? Nobody told him about it. Where did it come from? It came from the source that is outside of Einstein, right? Outside of all of us. This source is there. It's in the spiritual realm. And depending on the subject that you're interested in, you can tune into the source of interest and receive the information. It's kind of like downloading it. Same way you can download into your desk uh, the information about your destiny, about your future, about possibilities, um, about different way of healing, improving your job, mm -hmm. uh, your career, anything you want. All you need to do is to learn and train yourself how to do it. And see, the dreams are the best tool that you can use to actually train yourself. 
We were designed so. this way. I seriously believe that God gave us the dreams at night is, as a way to communicate so with the him. dream the dream opened a door you know for Einstein it opened a door to this whole new idea. He now spent the next couple of weeks meditating on the idea in other so words what was he now doing? that the he door was is open himself he was kind of honing this 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 pathway of mm -hmm. information he wanted to get it clear so it's a doorway so open to an actual to place it. in a spiritual place mm -hmm. and got open in that dream he keeps meditating meaning he keeps going through that door yep. and he keeps gathering more information yes. and he keeps putting it together now he's bringing it down and putting it together and then at the end he comes down those stairs and he has those two sheets i of remember paper. my experience when i was um uh, just starting with my spiritual journeys and I was seeking knowledge and I was seeking wisdom. I was seeking information on different subjects. And I had few interesting dreams and experiences, visual experiences, where I was taken to the, um, not the bookstore, the library. Library. Mm -hmm. It was just incredible place filled with books, spiritual books. And there were even the books of life of people. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it was a representational place because, you know, the book you didn't have to read. It contained the information that you needed, but it was kind of like a representation of the subject that you were tuning into. So depending on what I was trying to receive as an information source, you know, I was kind of reaching out to it and taking in, in my dream. I was taking it to this library and pulling out this book. And when I would open it, I was able to receive the information. It was and still access is there. So you I can, were, you were I accessing information it. in that spiritual realm, which we're traveling to every night. And this is the thing for you people at home. There is so many more theories, mysteries, ideas, inventions that have not been received yet. And yet they are there in that realm waiting. And all you need to do is in, you can set an intention in your dream. You can unlock that door and go through it. That's how I was knowing Einstein's theory without ever having read it. I, in my dream again, had opened the same door. I mm -hmm. went to the same place and I started receiving this information. I wasn't studying it. I wasn't having to work to think about it. It was just popping into my mind. That's how I have to describe it. It was just popping in. And I'd be like, oh, that's an interesting idea that he you had. You just need to open yourself to receive it. Right, exactly. Let's go on to the next. And another point I want to make. Um, you need to kind of, and that's what I, I, call, uh, I call true humbleness. True humbleness is allowing yourself to think that you don't know everything. Mm -hmm. People who think that they're too smart, know it all, studied a lot, have a lot of degrees and know this and know that and experts on everything, it's much harder for them to tune into the, this kind of source of information, okay? They will be just learning more and, and, and you know, kind of using their own knowledge to do things that are already known. But if you want to be extraordinary, if you want to go one level higher, ten levels higher, and receive something amazing that nobody else did, you need to kind of put it into your heart that there are a lot of things that you don't know, mm -hmm. but you want to. And that what happens, that sets you up. It gives you an intention, and that intention will automatically propel you forward and open you up to know more and to receive more. Now, I have another example I want to share with you guys that will help you to understand how to receive that, how that information is received, how it works. Now, this guy... He again, he has to fall into that category of genius, mm -hmm. and uh, his name is Raman Ramujan, right? Is that my pronouncing it right again? I guess so. <laughs> I knew I was going to have trouble with that name, but he, this guy, was born in poverty in India. Uh, you might have seen a movie about him, The Man Who Knew Infinity, it came out mm -hmm. in 2015. They made a movie about him, uh, but. In math, he was a mathematician that really was self-taught. He, he, you know, he had gone to a few schools, but majority of it was self-taught, and he was just automatically receiving this information. Now, it, let, let me just read a little bit about what he did so you kind of know. He was a mathematical genius, uh, substantial contributions to analytical theory of numbers, mm -hmm. elliptical functions, continued fractions, and infinite series, and he proved more than 3,000 mathematical theorems in his lifetime. Uh, this guy was pro prolific. And now here's what's interesting. He credits, he credits um, being able to do this by the fact that he would, a goddess would come to him in his sleep 
and give him this information, would actually show him these formulas. Wow. And this is what really makes him kind of outstanding. And he said that all the time. And that's just amazing. So he was receiving all these formulas in his dream. And see, what he was describing as a goddess, right? Mm -hmm. I believe she, it was She presented him with complex mathematical wow. formulas over and over, wow. which he could then test and verify upon awakening. Here's an example. Well asleep... I, I had an unusual experience. This is him talking. Mm -hmm. There was a red screen formed by flowing blood, as it were. I was observing the screen. And suddenly, a hand began to write on the screen. Oh, wow. I became all attention. And that hand wrote a number of results in elliptical intervals. They stuck to my mind. Mm -hmm. As I woke up, I committed them to writing. Wow, that... Reminds me of biblical writing. A hand appears, yeah, uh, and starts to write on the wall. That's right. Wow, it's like biblical writing. What's Tell the hand me. represent in that? The hand represents power, the power of God. But I believe this hand, and there and is also blood talks also. About the hand, it also, a hand can often appear in visions and dreams. It's talking about God, the presence of God coming. And, and even, you know, there was a hand writing on a wall in, in the book of Daniel. It talked about that. And it started with blood, and blood represents the truth, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So he was given the truth, divine truth, through the power of God. That's and what what this is telling me. But it's totally biblical experience. It's incredible. Oh, now, in other another case he described, he would receive visions of scrolls of complex mathematical content unfolding before his eyes. Amazing. So these vast scrolls were now unfolding and he would see these mathematical formulas. Gorgeous. So this guy who was really self-taught for the most part, who had proved all these theories and was able to solve all these problems and he was receiving it in a divine way, the same way Amazing. as Einstein received Amazing. it. Amazing. But this guy acknowledges very heavily that that's where it's coming from. Raman I Mujan. believe him. <laughs> he often said, an equation for me has no meaning unless it represents a thought of God. Wow. Incredible guy. Now, one time, a friend gave him a complex mathematical question. He asked him the question just there. And within a moment, he, he gave the answer. Mm -hmm. And the friend was astonished. Because I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Goodwill Hunting. They had the math whiz on there. A lot of people saw that movie. The guy, you know how they had to go on the blackboard and just write down all these equations and it filled up entire blackboards in order to get the answer right. and you know right. he didn't need that he just suddenly had the answer so his friend said to him how could you possibly have that answer what is that what is it and he said he said he, the friend asked him the question he said i asked myself and then the answer came to my mind so where did it come from it didn't come from his mind. It came to his mind. See, that's the most interesting part about it. The answer was just there like that. And guys, that's what we're trying to convey to you today. All right. You have access to all information ever, ever <laughs> existed. So you need to just attune yourself, open yourself, learn how to work with your dreams. Because your dreams like are like a gateway yeah. into all sources of information. Okay, it's like higher education, higher than mm -hmm. higher education, right? Well, and look at this. He wasn't struggling to work through these these complex things. They were just, he was uh, being given he was being given it. And even when his friend asked this question, he asked what would that answer be? And he received it. It just came to him. So it's, it's being easy. given. That's a beautiful thing. It is. And that's the same thing we were see, this is the thing is I'm so excited because this is there for all of you. Every single person that's listening to this, you have the opportunity to receive this information to in the nighttime dreams. You just have to begin to set the intention, start to understand that all the information that ever will be is already out there and it can be tapped into in your dreams and you can receive it and bring it back. You can be a true genius. I mean, that... You're, you're going to make it look easy when you have that. It starts to flow into you, and it's natural, and it's obvious. You just, we just have to wake up and start to believe that, start to know that that kind of, it's possible and it's there. See, we even have a saying, right? Whenever you need to make a decision and you don't know what to do, you say, what, what do you say? I need to sleep on it. I need to sleep on it, yeah. Right? And why, why is the saying there? 
because when you have something on your mind and you go to sleep you kind of make an intention, right? You attune yourself. You're trying to tap into the source of information to improve your situation, to make a decision, to decide whether to go into this business or not, you know, to be in the relationship or not. Whatever it is that is on your mind, it's kind of like setting up an intention. And when you go to sleep, bam, your spirit goes to work, right? It goes into the place where it will receive the answer. And Lo and behold, you wake up and you know the answer. Mm -hmm. But it only happens when you pay attention to your dreams, when you attune yourself with the divine, when you ask God for guidance, when you choose to be the person who is guided by the Spirit. Yeah. Right? Let, let's talk about yeah. another guy. Right. You ready? Oh, I'm excited. These are awesome <laughs> people. Okay, Their last name are hard to pronounce, but they're incredible. <laughs> here's another guy. Okay, now, you've heard of King Solomon, right? Mm-hmm. And, and we all know about the legendary wisdom, wisdom of King Solomon, right? When you think of King Solomon, you think of his wisdom and you think of his riches. I mean, that's just the two things. But do you know where his legendary wisdom came from? I don't think everybody knows about no, it. No, they don't, they don't think about where it came from. Right. They just, just think, know that he was wise. And I'm sure they just think, oh, he was always wise, right? And I that's, think he was rich because he was wise. Actually, it says that. Yeah. <laughs> now so, I'm a genius. You're a genius? What the heck? Are you tapping into something here? <laughs> <laughs> now, now let's take a look here. In 1 Kings, it, in chapter 3 and verse 5, it's talking about Solomon, King Solomon. And here it says, At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. Wow. Solomon is having a dream. Wow. Sleeping at night. The Lord appears to him. The Lord asks him, basically, I'm going to sum it up because it's a little bit too long to read here. But basically, the Lord asks him, what would you like to have wow. in this dream? What would you like to have? Solomon said, therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I may discern good and evil for whom is able to judge this great people of yours. He's asking for an understanding heart. He's asking wow. for wisdom. Now... Understanding heart, not the brain. Right. See, because true wisdom is coming is 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 coming from the heart. That's where right. the true wisdom is coming from. Presentation wise, mm -hmm. right? And so, uh, and behold, oh, so let, let's go on. So he said, then the the speech that pleased the Lord. Then Solomon had asked this thing. Mm -hmm. Then God said to him, because you have asked this thing and have not asked for long life for yourself or not asked for riches nor have asked for life of your the life of your enemies but you have asked for yourself understanding to discern judgment behold i have done according to your word so he's going to give him this mm -hmm. so i have given you a wise and understanding heart wow god has given and this is all going on in the dream so that there has not been anyone like you before you all right, we skip down to the, down to verse 15 still in chapter 3. It says then Solomon awoke and indeed it had been a dream. He was just awoken and he was a wise man. So in his dream, he, God appears before him, asks him, "What can I do for you?" Solomon says, "I want a discerning heart." God gives him a wise and discerning heart. This man is legendary because of his wisdom. He received it at nighttime in a dream. I love it, Ted. We know him because he's King Solomon. We know him because Everybody of his legend, of his, his legendary wisdom. But that wisdom was given to him in a dream. Discerning heart. Discerning I heart. I love it. Every word is the word of wisdom in these passages. And, and this is the thing, is that God is working... He loves all of us, and He wants to give something great to all of us. We have to have, just be asking in that space at night. We are, we, our bodies are resting when we're sleeping at night, but our spirit is traveling into heavenly places. And in those places, as, you, as Liza was saying, you can see libraries, you can see books. Uh, theories can be open to you mathematical formulas can be open to you wisdom can be open to you ideas inventions stories songs i mean the list goes on and on these are dreams that will change your world but also change the entire world and you could be receiving these every single night you could be receiving a dream like this you just have to be asking i love that solomon you know solomon had and been believing praying believing that you can 
-hmm. That is the clue, you guys. See, lots of people want it. They are asking, but they don't have a belief that they can receive it in their dreams. So right now, I want to encourage you to kind of examine your system of beliefs. Why are we telling you this? Because this is true. We've done it. We are doing it every night, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. That it changed our lives. But also, these people, incredible people, they received all the wisdom, inventions were coming to them in the dreams. So this is true. Right now, I want you to examine your beliefs. Do you still have a belief that what you see at night is just regurgitating or what you've seen you know, throughout the day or, or the movie that you saw or maybe the memories are being cleansed out and washed, whatever? Just let go of this belief and try to receive the belief that through dreams, through dreaming, you can travel to heavenly places, receive, receive incredible incredible wisdom and become the person that you were created to be so you can achieve whatever you want in life this belief will change your life it's very important receive the belief that dreams are real just like your spiritual life is real yes i know your physical body seems to be very real right now because mm -hmm. you can touch it right it hurts sometime right you know it exists you you, you can see it you can feel it but your spirit is just as alive and it is real. Your thought is material, right? It is real. Even though you cannot see it and taste it, it's real. Electricity, you cannot see it, right? Unless it's a light bulb that kind of shows you that, yeah, it's there. It's real, right? So when you receive this belief, when you believe that dreams are real and you can re enter the dream space and travel to incredible places that are storing information for you, you will be able to do it. And that is the most incredible gift you can give to yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's amazing. I want to look at one thing real quick here. Uh, what was Solomon doing before he had this dream? He was praying and he was praying to God. And he was seeking God. Um, so he his heart was being put into that direction. So he was already setting an intention. Mm -hmm. He wants to talk to God. He wants to hear from God. Mm -hmm. And now he has this dream. And that's the thing. See, we, we saw several different things take place. Okay, what do we do? How do we have one of these dreams? All right, start to set your intention. Start to put your focus on God. Start to inquire of Him. I want to receive this information. I want. I need to receive more information. Or I, or I want to solve this problem in my life. You can start to put that out there. We also see that... Much like when we talked about with Einstein, he received an idea. It wasn't completely fleshed mm -hmm. out, but he knew he knew something was there. He kept meditating on it now. Right. So Solomon received the wisdom right away. It just was given to him. But Einstein had to meditate on this idea, and he had to continually let it kind of start to get take life. And so he began to see more and more of it as he put it down. Okay. And also, if we think about our friend uh, Ramu John. Notice what he did. He he is seeing, he is, first of all, he is acknowledging it's not coming from him. Right. He knows there's something else. He says, let me repeat this again. An equation for me has no meaning unless it represents a thought of God. A thought of God. I love he it. He knows this infer these mathematical equations. He knows they're coming from God and he knows they're being given to him. He's not saying, hey, I'm a genius. Mm -hmm. He's acknowledging Even God is we believe he is. God is giving me this information. And this is one of the keys to being able to continue. As Liza said, if you start to think you're a know-it-all and you start trying to get all those answers out of your head, you block off the source. Overthinking kills He you was very it. humble. Even though he had done so much, he was he was very humble in being able to still acknowledge and be open to receive more guidance. Even like when his friend asked him the question, he asked his himself. What is the answer? Mm -hmm. He didn't suddenly start to, you know, use his mind to think about it. The answer just came to him. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. So these are a few important points. Set your intention. Uh, when you receive an idea, begin to meditate on it. Don't let your own understanding go to work and start to, you know, say, oh, it must mean this or it must mean that. Start to meditate on it. And again, be humble. Ask, what else? What, what is the answer to this? What does this information mean? Let it come to you. God wants to give it to you. Just like he gave Solomon the wise heart, he wants to give it to you. So if you put your attention towards him, 
You're going to be having the dreams. You're going to be receiving the information. It happens time and time and time again. And we, I mean, I've been covering throughout history how people have had dreams like this. They're not the only ones. You can have dreams like this too. And I hope you're getting very excited about it. Well, I'm it. getting very excited. I can't wait to go to bed tonight. See, <laughs> well, it's still, it's still morning. You're going to hang on there. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> I love dreaming. But see, you don't have to even fall asleep to receive the information. When you train yourself, you just can go into meditation and receive it. Absolutely. But you start with dreams. This is the best way to open yourself up. I love it. Thank true, you, Ted. True Very genius, inspirational. True genius is coming from a divine source flowing down to us. That's very true. Let's say a prayer. Let's say a prayer. Because I, I want you to turn your attention towards God like Solomon did. Mm -hmm. And if there's a problem in your life, or if you're looking for a new business idea, maybe a new angle to the business you've already got, maybe you've already explored everything that you know, and you've kind of come to a dead end, it's time to now start turning your attention towards God. Start to seek Him. Just close your eyes right now and start to seek Him and let Him know, you know what, I heard what Ted and Liza said. I heard the stories of these incredible guys and I'm ready to let myself be opened. I'm ready to receive from a higher place today. Right. I'm ready to receive divine guidance. I'm ready to see the hand of God right on the wall for me. I'm ready to receive the wisdom and the discernment of heart. I'm ready to let go of everything that I think I know so that I can receive something so much more and that will help me to be lifted into an incredible place and an incredible position. I'm ready to let go of all those other things because I seek the hand and the wisdom of God and I seek your heart. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you have opened your way that for every single one of us, for every single person, you have opened the way that while we sleep at night, we can have powerful dreams that give us wisdom, yes. that give us healing, yes. that change our lives. Yes. We thank you, God, that your power is working in us. And we know and acknowledge that the wisdom is yours, but we thank you that you let us use it and you let it flow through us, giving us inventions, giving us new businesses, giving us new theories, mathematical formulas, songs, books, whatever it is. We receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now receive it into your heart. You have it. And now rejoice in it. Be blessed because you guys can do incredible things. And we're here with you. We're doing it together. Thank you for joining us on the show today. View from above. Come back again next week because we're going to be talking about part four of Dreams That Change the World. we got more incredible people to talk about and more important things for you to know. I hope you're receiving this message. I know that you're receiving this message. And I know that it will change you like it changed us. Be blessed today and every day.